My name is Commander John Barrientos, the ship's executive officer. I'm privileged to be your master of ceremonies today. Before our ceremony begins, please take a moment to silence your cell phones, please. We're here today to celebrate the commissioning of USS Omaha. She's the fourth ship to carry the name Omaha. The first was laid down in 1867 by the Philadelphia Navy Yard as Astoria. Launched on June 10, 1869, she was renamed Omaha on August 10, 1869, and commissioned on September 12, 1872. She was best known for the service she provided on the night of February 8, 1890, when she put ashore a detachment of officers and men to assist in fighting an extensive fire in the town of Hodogaya, Japan. The second U.S. Omaha, CL-4, was the lead ship of the Omaha class of light cruisers and spent most of the Second World War operating the Atlantic, where she stopped three German blockade runners. She was awarded one battle star for her service. U.S. Omaha SSN 692, a Los Angeles class submarine, was the third ship of the United States Navy to be named for Omaha, Nebraska. The submarine was commissioned in 1978 and decommissioned in 1995. LCS 12 is the sixth independence variant class of littoral combat ships. These ships are unique in the Navy's ship design. The primary mission of the LCS can be changed from surface warfare to anti submarine warfare or mine warfare simply by changing out the mission module. The LCS is designed to operate in water too shallow for other Navy ship classes. This class also has a very large flight deck and blazing speed in excess of 40 knots. It truly is a revolutionary design. The ship before you was christened on December 19, 2015 at also USA in Mobile, Alabama. Today she is complete and we are proud to serve in the newest warship in the United States Navy. The ship's crew are honored to carry the name of Omaha as we defend American, the American way of life whenever and wherever we may be called. Our ceremony today is a time-honored tradition which began with the commissioning of our first ship, a captured British schooner, the Margareta, in 1775. Since then, thousands of ships have undergone the transformation from silent hull to fully alive warship. Our commissioning crew, hereafter known as plank owners, are in formation among you and are ready. In just a few moments, the Navy Band Southwest will render honors to the Honorable Pete Ricketts. We'd like to thank the Papillion and La Vista Community Schools Navy JROTC Color Guard for presenting the nation's colors today. Will the guests please rise and remain standing for the arrival of our official party, honors and invocation. Ladies and gentlemen, our platform guests. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated.
Sir? Will the guests please rise and remain standing for the arrival of our official party, honors and vacation. Ladies and gentlemen, our platform guests, Lieutenant Commander Scott Shields, Chaplain's Corps, United States Navy, Littoral Combat Ship Squadron 1, Command Chaplain. Commander Andy Gold, United States Navy, Production Officer, Littoral Combat Ship Program. Mr. James Evans, Operations Deputy, Supervisor of Shipbuilding, Gulf Coast. Captain Jordy Harrison, United States Navy, Commander, Littoral Combat Ship Squadron 1. Captain Richard Holdcroft, United States Navy, retired, Chairman, USS Omaha Commissioning Committee. Mr. Craig Percy Valley, President, Austral USA. Rear Admiral John Nagley, United States Navy, Program Executive Officer for Littoral Combat Ships. The Honorable Gene Stothert, Mayor, City of Omaha, Nebraska. Vice Admiral Richard Brown, United States Navy, Commander, Naval Surface Forces, Commander, Naval Surface Force Pacific Fleet. Admiral Scott Swift, United States Navy, Commander, United States Pacific Fleet. The Honorable Kevin Faulkner, Mayor, City of San Diego, California. The Honorable Richard V. Spencer, Secretary of the Navy. The Honorable Don Bacon, United States Representative, 2nd District, State of Nebraska. The Honorable Bob Carey, former United States Senator, State of Nebraska. Ladies and gentlemen, our ship sponsor, Ms. Susie Buffett, escorted by Command Senior Chief Michael Roll. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Pete Ricketts, Governor, State of Nebraska, escorted today by our commanding officer, Commander Michael Toth, United States Navy. Ladies and gentlemen, honors for the Honorable Pete Ricketts. Ready, two. Advance the colors. Platform and salute.
Tower of the Colors. Platform. Ready. Two. Ladies and gentlemen, Chaplain Shields will deliver the invocation. Good afternoon. Please pray with me. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Merciful God, we who have traveled near and far to share in the joy and excitement of this day welcome you as our most honored guest. Lord, as long as sailors have gone to sea in ships, we have felt the powerful urge and sense of awe and mystery which takes us from those we love and to whom we long to return. As long as sailors have known that life lived only for oneself is a, not, is a life not lived to our fullest potential according to the gifts and abilities that you, our gracious God, has blessed us with. We sailors have set sail in ships with courage to defend lives more precious than our own. Today, this amazing ship joins a growing fleet of littoral combat ships, which bring together a captain and a crew's skill and dedication to successfully navigate both the shallow littorals and the vast deep oceans throughout the world, and if necessary, to engage any threat on sea, land, or in the air with power and resolve. Lord, as USS Omaha is commissioned into the greatest Navy in the world this day. We give thanks and pray that the supporting staff, crews of the commander, the Toro Combat Ship Squadron One, and every team that has invested much into our planning, construction, and operation may feel a great sense of accomplishment and pride, and that the people of this great, the great state of Nebraska and California, and more specifically the citizens of the city of Omaha and San Diego, whose name will be, on the, will be heralded throughout the world, wherever USS Omaha sets sail over the horizon. May they be properly honored by her outstanding service, and may those who sail in her devote themselves to the fullest accomplishment of every responsibility that is theirs in pride, professionalism, and excellence. May our great nation look to USS Omaha, her captain, and her amazing crew with pride as a model of excellence and execution of every mission they are given. A respected adversary in conflict, an effective deterrent to war, a welcome sight in every port, and a symbol of means of compassion and assistance to those whose misfortunes make their means of survival, hope, and peace. Gracious Lord, we celebrate this joyous day with a deep sense of awe and gratitude for your presence with us and for the dedication of Captain Tok, his crew, and their families, and everyone who has worked so hard to bring this ship to life. We now ask your ongoing blessing upon USS Omaha, her captain and crew, the people of Omaha, Nebraska, and all who are here to witness this grand celebration. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Will the guests please be seated? Ship's company, all right, rest. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Kevin Faulkner. Well, good afternoon and welcome. Look, so many of you have traveled so far to be here on a beautiful San Diego day. It is an honor to join everyone as we celebrate the commissioning of the USS Omaha. I want to acknowledge all of our distinguished guests and so many, uh, so many of you who have been traveled to make this a very, very special day. Uh, for so many of us in our, in our country. The sheer number of people that are here to celebrate this commissioning are a testament to the pride that San Diegans feel for our military, our veterans, and our city. The military presence in San Diego is embedded in our history. It's part of who we are. And our region is home to thousands and thousands of active duty personnel, reserves, 
and veterans, our friends, our neighbors, and our family members. And today, we get the honor to welcome a new member to our family, the USS Omaha, a piece of the heartland, joining with our coastal waters to protect our freedom. Fourth ship to bear its name, Omaha, for the largest city in the great state of Nebraska. A city transformed throughout history from its Native American roots, the many pioneers that settled along the Missouri River in our nation's westward expansion. She represents the strong work ethic and friendly demeanor that is synonymous with our nation's Midwest. Her leadership and her crew's willingness to brave any future endeavor will keep our city and our nation safe. She and her crew will be known for their courage, their patriotism, and their valor. And it's because of their willingness to put their lives on the line that we can say that we live in the greatest country in the world. It's an honor to be here today for this commissioning and to welcome the USS Omaha to San Diego. Thank you to all of you for being here, to supporting our Navy and bringing this great ship to fruition. Good afternoon and God bless each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Faulkner. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Craig Percy Valley. Senator Kerry, Governor Ricketts, Representative Bacon, Secretary Spencer, Admiral Swift, Vice Admirals Alexander and Brown, Admiral Nagley, Mayors Faulkner and Stothert, Commander Toth and the Omaha crew, and our sponsor, Susie Buffett. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm truly honored to represent the Austell USA industry team on this fine Navy day as we commission USS Omaha, the coolest ship on the planet. <laughs> From a shipbuilder's perspective, two things really excite us. The first one is launching a ship and watching it float, which is kind of important for a ship. The, the other is to see your ship named after a great all-American city, sponsored by a wonderful person and crewed by the best sailors in the world. Get commissioned, come to life to serve our country. I'll tell you, it just doesn't get any better than this. Secretary Spencer, we thank you for the honor we have to serve our country in this way. And we look forward to continuing to do so for many years to come as we support you in achieving a 355 ship Navy. Avril Nagley, we also want to thank you and your team for your leadership and support as we continue to meet our commitments on this program, delivering two ships per year, uh, including now the latest addition to the fleet, the Omaha, our best ship yet. Commander Toth, we built you a great ship, one that will serve you well for many years as you deploy Omaha around the world at the tip of the spear, defending our freedoms. So on behalf of the 4,000 best shipbuilding professionals in the country down in Mobile, Alabama, General Dynamics, Mission Systems, and over 450 other suppliers across 37 states, we thank you for your service to our country. We wish you fair winds and following seas. God bless this ship, all who sail in her, and God bless America. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Percy Valley. Ladies and gentlemen, Rear Admiral John Nagley. Well, good afternoon. What a great Navy day. Good morning, good afternoon, Governor Ricketts, Senator Kerry, Representative Bacon, Secretary Spencer, Mayors, Admirals, distinguished guests, and the great shipbuilders of Austell USA and our entire LCS industry and government team. Welcome and thank you for your continuing support of the Navy. A special note of thanks and appreciation to Miss Susie Buffett, the ship sponsor, for all her dedicated efforts for the crew and their families. 
her kindness and grace will forever be part of this great warship. I also want to especially thank the commissioning committee who have tirelessly worked to plan this great ceremony today. Your pride, professionalism, and attention to detail is reflected in every aspect of this ceremony. Thank you for the extra effort you have put in to make this event so very special. You know, the commissioning of the warship is one of the most time-honored traditions in our Navy. It represents the beginning of a ship's operational service to our nation. Today, we will witness, soon witness, the Omaha sailors man the rails, a tradition that symbolizes bringing the ship to life. The Navy also has another rich tradition and long-standing tradition that is naming warships after a legacy of ships in past eras. Today, U.S. Omaha is no exception. The original U.S. Omaha was a light cruiser, that lead ship of a class commissioned in the 1920s, whose mission was to serve as scouts for the Navy's main fleeting operating forward, often alone looking for the enemy. During World War II, Omaha operated extensively in the South Atlantic, engaging enemy merchant raiders, sinking several in combat, and her crew was the last Navy crew to receive prize money after seizing the German merchant ship. I would contend that the prize money notwithstanding, that the missions conducted by that light cruiser, Omaha, are not all that dissimilar from what we envision for the today's loyal to combat ship. USS Omaha, operating forward, deployed overseas, executing critical sea control missions, operating with our allies and partners, and ensuring freedom of education across the globe. While time and technology and armaments set these two USS Omahas apart, it is the Navy's enduring sea control mission that connects these two ships across the ensuing decades. Commander Toth, congratulations to you and your crew as Omaha officially enters the fleet today. I know you will forge new traditions as you embark upon many new missions and challenges ahead. And remember that the real combat power from any ship comes from America's best and brightest. The incredible men and women who man and fight and sail her into harm's way to protect those liberties we hold so dear. So as you enter the fleet today, do it with good luck and Godspeed, and thank you. Thank you, Rod Romaykin. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Gene Stothert. Good afternoon. Well, it's certainly an honor to represent the citizens of Omaha here today on Broadway Pier. Throughout history, Omaha has demonstrated a great patriotic spirit and support for the men and women who serve our country and preserve our freedoms. We are proud to have earned the national ranking as one of the country's top military-friendly cities. Years before Nebraska became the 37th state, the military district of Nebraska was created to protect the U.S. mail and the telegraph line, to protect the frontier and freight moving across the Great Plains by rail. The mission of the early protectors has evolved into the mission of today's armed forces to protect the security of our nation. The USS Omaha offers yet another opportunity to continue that tradition of pride and patriotism. On four occasions now, a naval ship has carried the name Omaha, named after an Omaha tribe, and Omaha means those going against the wind or the current. We like that description of our people, and we proudly live up to that name. The people of Omaha are hardworking and dependable, creative and entrepreneurial, caring and generous. You see these qualities in the people representing our state and local government, our corporate community, and our philanthropic donors. Thank you all to our here today, and a special thanks to these following Nebraskans. Susie Buffett, sponsor of the USS Omaha, former United States Senator and Nebraska Governor Bob Carey, Congressman Don Bacon, Governor Pete Ricketts, Nebraska State Senator Jim Smith, Mr. Mike Yanni, Mr. Walter Scott, Mr. Warren Buffett, Omaha City Council members Ben Gray, Pete Festerson, and Vinnie Palermo, and Brinker Harding. Thank you to Captain Rick Holcroft, Chairman of the Commissioning Committee. And finally, to Commander Michael Toff, congratulations. We welcome you and your crew 
to our Omaha family. Omaha is the home of four Fortune 500 companies, Berkshire Hathaway, Union Pacific Railroad, the Peter Kiewit Corporation, and Mutual of Omaha. Dozens of defense-related companies are located in the metropolitan area, and of course, off at Air Force Base, the home of STRATCOM is one of our largest employers. In Omaha, we value education. Our schools prepare students for higher education and careers. Our colleges and universities graduate leaders for the future. Our two medical centers are at the forefront of research, treatment, and prevention of disease. Omaha is a sports event destination, home of the College World Series, host for the U.S. Olympic Swim Trials, the NCAA Sweet 16, and the PGA Senior Open. You will find Omaha on top 10 lists ranging from America's best cities, the most up and coming cities in America, and a best city to raise a family. I am very proud to be the mayor of Omaha and proud to share our name, our heritage, and our community values with USS Omaha, its commander, and its commander. And we wish you safety on your mission and thank you for your service. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Sother. Ladies and gentlemen, Vice Admiral Richard Brown. Friends, family, distinguished guests, it is a distinct honor and privilege to represent the Navy Surface Force here today in San Diego. I am thrilled to welcome USS Omaha LCS-12 and her crew, led by Commander Mike Toth, into the Surface Force into San Diego. Almost a decade ago, we introduced the LCS class to the fleet as a modular, reconfigurable ship designed to meet validated fleet requirements for surface warfare, anti-submarine anti warfare, and mine countermeasures. These ships are designed to employ a variety of manned and unmanned vehicles to, to gain, sustain, and exploit littoral maritime supremacy. I am proud to stand here today in front of Omaha, who is the embodiment of that vision. This ship will forward deploy in support of our numbered fleet commanders, meaning our Navy's maritime missions and objectives. She is tailor-made for the dynamic and congested sea lanes, straits, and archipelagos of the South Pacific and will provide flexible options and unparalleled tactical advantages. Omaha's adaptability is like no other in our Navy. Her large mission and hangar bay, large flight deck, and integrated networks and combat systems will allow her to rapidly change missions operate manned and unmanned vehicles, and install new capabilities in the future, such as over-the-horizon anti-ship missiles. Changes, installations, and reconfigurations such as these would take months, if not years, on our more traditional warships. Omaha will strengthen international relations with partner nations through numerous multilateral and bilateral exercises as well as strategic port visits across the Indo-Pacific region that were not previously accessible to deeper draft surface combatants such as cruisers and destroyers. Her persistent visible presence when forward deploy will reassure allies and partners that the United States is committed to preventing conflict, deterring aggression, but if necessary, will fight and win. So on behalf of the U.S. Naval Surface Force, I welcome USS Omaha, Omaha and the, to the San Diego Navy family, and I look forward to seeing her crew accomplish great things in the fleet. Mike, from the type commander, keep the bottom wet and don't scratch the paint. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vice Admiral Brown. Ladies and gentlemen, Admiral Scott Swift. Good morning. It's uh, especially a great day for, uh, for me having uh, uh, been raised here in, in San Diego over 40 years of service in the Navy and, and never did a, a tour of duty. Should have picked the mayor as my, uh, as my detailer. Uh, but it's great to be back here in, uh, in San Diego, uh, such an uh, uh, auspicious uh, event. Uh, and it's great to be here in, uh, in San Diego, America's uh, finest city. Uh, it's been uh, such a welcoming home 
uh, to the United States Navy uh, for so many years, and that continues uh, today. And as Omaha's uh, new home uh, here in the Pacific Fleet area of operations, I want to point out that uh, it, that area of operations encompasses 100 million miles, nearly half the Earth's surface. It includes 36 nations that are home to more than half the world's population. Three of the world's largest economies and of the 10 largest militaries in the world, seven are in the Pacific and five of the world's declared nuclear powers. Security challenges within this strategic context are unsurprisingly diverse and especially complicated. In a region defined by the maritime environment, it, is, it increasingly falls on the back of maritime forces to uphold the security network that provides stability, which in, turns, which in turn has enabled the prosperity upon which so many nations rely. That is why I have directed San Diego's own third fleet under command of Vice Admiral Alexander to take on a greater operational role forward in the Pacific. And in fact, today, USS Carl Vincent and her strike group prowls the Pacific under his command from here in San Diego. The power of the Pacific Fleet is the combined power of Third and Seventh Fleet. We are seeing a reemergence of long-term strategic competition by revanchionist states that leverage military power and coercive predatory economic relationships to assert their national power and undermine the international rules-based order that has ensured the security and prosperity of the Pacific and the broader region of Pacific Fleet for over 75 years now. Indeed, these competitors seek to force their national laws in international space and replace the established order with an authoritarian model of their own design for their own advantage. Our strategic competitors have shown no reluctance about using all dimensions of national power, including threat-filled propaganda, commercial intimidation, and operations below the threshold of war to isolate and coerce neighbors into submission on the world stage. With this background, coupled with the vastness and diversity of the Indo-Pacific in mind, and in the context of great power competition, it's clear that we cannot be a one-size-fits-all Navy. Rather, we need to field an array of capabilities across all spectrums of power and domains to enhance regional partnerships, deter aggression, and if needed, as Admiral Brown said, win in combat. Omaha and her sister ships have important and unique capabilities that we need in the Indo-Pacific. I am just as confident today as I was in July in 2016 when I wrote about the value of LCS in, a, in the Proceedings Magazine. I know Omaha has an outsized role within the United States Navy and certainly within the Pacific Fleet. When a ship can, for example, complete maintenance or be rearmed in locations away from traditional U.S. Navy hubs and quickly return to the fight, it complicates a potential adversary's calculus and puts both the enemy's force and their intended course of action at much greater risk. No doubt, any competitors that seek to dominate the Indo-Pacific can neither afford to ignore uh, Omaha nor underestimate her crew. As you, the officers and crew of Omaha, hone yourselves and this vessel into an effective combat team, I challenge you to continue to seek new opportunities to make our fleet more agile, more resistant, more resilient, and more lethal today than we were yesterday. Do not hesitate to innovate, to re-envision what is in the realm of the possible, and above all, don't underestimate the impact of your role in the fleet. I know I won't and I don't. On behalf of a proud Pacific fleet and the Chief of Naval Operations, 
it gives me great pleasure to welcome USS Omaha and her crew to our team in the Pacific Fleet. Thank you. Thank you, Admiral Swift. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Don Bacon. Ladies and gentlemen, it's such a privilege to be here today as a representative of the 2nd District, but also as a 30-year airman to witness this great event. It's an honor to be here with our, my friends, Governor Ricketts, Mayor Stothert. We have many uh, city officials from Omaha here, county commissioners, state senators. I want to thank Susie Buffett for her leadership and for pouring her heart out and making this a success. Mr. Yanni, thank you too for your generosity and your talent and your resources. There, we have many community and business leaders out here today from Omaha, and it really stands as a part. Successful business leaders, but also very generous to our community, and you make us the best place to live. I want to thank the Navy League for what you do in Nebraska and for contributing to today's success. And finally, I just want to congratulate the skipper, Commander Toth. To command a unit is a special privilege. It's a responsibility that you wear heavily, but it's also one of love. And I know he's excited and his crew's excited to become operational today. I have three quick points that I'd like to, to throw out here today. First of all, as already mentioned, this is the fourth ship with the USS Omaha name. We already have a proud tradition, a proud heritage with this name, the USS Omaha. And we're going to build on it with this ship and with this crew. You know, the first USS Omaha was produced in 1869. It was steam engine powered and sail powered. It was part of the, the lead of the Navy for bearing President Ulysses S. Grant and led the Navy for unfurling the Statue of Liberty in 1886. But one thing we will not do to this ship that we did to the first ship, somebody, is that the time button? <clears throat> the one thing we're going to do, not do to this ship that we did to the first one, it, the first one was used as a quarantine ship for 25 years to put people with contagious diseases in. So we will not do that here. The second ship was a cruiser. It sunk three German ships in World War II and supported our ground forces in Italy and southern France. The third one was a Los Angeles class submarine that sailed 30 knots under the ocean, tracking Soviet and Russian submarines. And this ship, with a surface warfare mission, will serve proudly and build on those traditions and heritage. My second point, it's really all about the people. It's great to have great aircraft. It's great to have great ships, great tanks. But in the end, it takes men and women who put their lives on the line to serve. That's double, two warnings. The men and women, the 69 sailors who operate this ship, let's not forget that each one of them swore an oath to the Constitution. Each one says they're willing to give their life for you for your freedoms, to defend our way of life. They're the heart of what the Navy and our military is all about. And with that, it is my prayer, and I think indeed our prayer today, that we ask the Lord Almighty to protect this ship, to protect these sailors, to give them mission success, that they achieve excellence, and we pray that we be with their families so that they can endure months and months of absences. But let's also thank the Lord Almighty for giving us strong men and women that volunteer to serve their country like these 69 sailors are doing today. My third point is that the attributes of Omaha that Mayor Stothard touched on will be shared on this ship and will make it second to none in the United States Navy. Let me just tell you a little bit about Omaha from my perspective. As a 30-year Air Force guy, 16 assignments, I've lived all over the world. There's no greater place to live than Omaha, Nebraska the friendliest people I've ever met. They love the veterans better than anywhere I've ever been. There's a community of faith, community of work ethic, community of charisma and dynamic personality that gives us economic vitality. It's a city that loves its country. It's patriotic. It's a city that pulls together to accomplish hard and necessary things. And that's what's gonna happen on this ship with those 69 crew members, they're gonna to band together and be like that and be second to none in the, United, in the United States Navy. So let me close by saying on behalf of the second district, 
of nearly 700,000 citizens that we say we are proud of the USS Omaha. We're proud of the 69 crew members who are going to operate this ship. We're proud of the United States Navy, the best and the finest Navy in the world. And in a philosopher's words, who's really known as a sportsman, the best, one of the best quarterbacks ever, Peyton Manning, I'm going to close with three words. Omaha! 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 Thank you, Representative Bacon. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Pete Ricketts. Control of the seas means security. Control of the seas can mean peace. Control of the seas can mean victory. The United States must control the seas if it is to provide for your security. Those words were uttered by John F. Kennedy aboard the USS Kitty Hawk in 1963. And those words are as true today as they were nearly 55 years ago. And that is why we are here on this momentous day to commission the newest ship in the greatest Navy the world has ever seen. Thank you, Commander Toth and your crew for your service and sacrifice to our great nation. And thank you to the families of all of our active military. For we know they serve too, and they sacrifice as well. And their loved ones couldn't do their jobs without that support back at home. Now, the U.S. Navy has known the importance of defending our republic since 1775. They have always stepped up to the call. They have always been the first line of defense to protect our great republic and the freedom that it provides to all of us. But Commander, you can be very proud of the name that your ship bears. Because the city of Omaha, our largest city in Nebraska, and indeed the state of Nebraska, has a long history of patriotic service to our country as well. In the Civil War at the beginning, our territorial legislature met in Omaha and formed the first Nebraska Volunteer Infantry, Volunteer Infantry Regiment that served under General Grant in Tennessee and participated in the Battle of Shiloh. In World War I, 600 Nebraskans paid the ultimate sacrifice to defend our freedoms, including Omaha native Lieutenant Jarvis Offutt, who was an early aviator, an officer in what would become the U.S. Air Force. Nearby Offutt Air Force Base is named after him. In World War II, Red Cloud native Don Stratton was aboard the USS Arizona at Pearl Harbor. He was one of the survivors, though badly burned, spent 10 months in a hospital, rehabilitated and demanded to be let back in the Navy, was refused several times. Finally, the Navy said, if you can complete boot camp, we will let you back in. And he did. And instead of taking a job as an instructor, he demanded to be put on a ship that supported five invasions of the Pacific before the end of the war. That's Nebraska grit. Nebraskans continue to serve our country today. The Nebraska National Guard has been deployed many times. In fact, currently we have 53 soldiers right now in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, serving our country. And of course, we're home to STRATCOM, helping defend our nation against the most dangerous weapons that have ever been developed since the end of the Cold War, or since the beginning of the Cold War. Yes, Commander, you and your crew can be very proud of your ship's namesake and the state where that city resides. And I know that you will be able to count on the people of Omaha to have your back and support you, because I know the people of Omaha. We are all praying for you and your mission. We wish you Godspeed, 
God bless you and your work. And God bless the United States of America. Okay. And now I'm going to exercise a little bit of gubernatorial privilege, even though this is not my state. Some of you know, many of you may not, know that Nebraska has its own Navy. And as governor, I have the privilege of honoring people with a civic award by making them an admiral in the Navy. Now, this is always reserved for individuals. But today we are making an exception, the first that I know about, and we are going to designate the entire crew of the USS Omaha as an admiral in the great Navy of the state of Nebraska. So if you'll please bear, me with, bear with me a moment. Admiral, the great Navy of the state of Nebraska, to all who shall see these presents, greetings. Know ye that reposing special trust and confidence in the patriotism, valor, fidelity, and abilities of the crew of the USS Omaha LCS-12, and knowing you to be good people and, a loyal, and loyal friends and counselors, I have nominated and do by appoint you an admiral in the great Navy of the state of Nebraska. You are therefore called to diligently discharge the duties of Admiral by doing and performing all manner of things thereto belonging. And I do by strictly charge and require all officers, seamen, tadpoles, and goldfish under your command to be obedient to your orders as Admiral. And you are to observe and to follow from time to time such directions as you shall receive according to the rules and discipline of the great Navy of the state of Nebraska this commission to continue in force during the period of your good behavior and at the pleasure of the Chief Admiral of the Great Navy of the State of Nebraska. Given under my hand, I signed this a couple days ago, in the city of Lincoln, the State of Nebraska, this first day of February 2018, the year of our Lord, Pete Ricketts, Governor of the State of Nebraska. Commander, will you please accept this on behalf of the crew? Thank you, Governor Ricketts. Thank you, Governor. Omaha stands ready for the challenge. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Richard V. Spencer. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for being here today. And uh, one of the things that I was taught early on is to read your audience. And while it is a beautiful, great San Diego day, I am very much aware that I'm under canvas and you're not. So I'm going to abandon the formal speech and compress my uh, comments, especially uh, for the crew who's standing there, not in their uh, tropicals. <laughs> Governor Ricketts, Senator Kerry, Representative Brown, Mayor Strother, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for representing the people in Omaha uh, and the great state of Nebraska. Last night, I had the opportunity to be introduced by Senator Kerry to um, Mike Sullivan, and I met Mike Sullivan's wife, who introduced me to her sisters. And I was uh, fascinated. There are seven sisters, of which three were Navy nurses. If that doesn't epitomize a city that goes forth and supports the Navy, I don't know what does. So thank you very much. I'd also like to, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, give a tip of the hat to the 75th Secretary of the Navy who's with us here this morning, Ray Mavis. <laughs> Welcome Buffett family, Warren, Susie, and thank you for the work you've done as a sponsor going forward with this ship. I was intrigued that the, the family has deep lineage in public service. Your grandfather, your father, Howard Buffett, four terms uh, in the, uh, uh, as a representative from Nebraska, non-consecutive too. So that's uh, very impressive stepping forward. Thank you to the Austell team who builds a fantastic piece of gear. Finally, thank you Admiral Brown, Mr. Holcroft, Commander Toth, other distinguished guests, and the total crew of the USS Omaha. Today is a very special occasion, uh, and we're all here to send forth this ship with good wishes. The Omaha and her sister ships fill a unique mission in the United States Navy. Littoral Combat Ship System 
is coming back from its first rotations, and the commander is giving it straight A's. This is a terrific platform that you will see more and more of going forth presenting peace through presence. But let us not forget what we're here for. It will deliver kinetic energy when so called for. Forward deployed independent operators with the increased ability to make sure our interests are protected and our freedoms are protected. The ship also re represents an investment in our nation. You may have heard me speak as we go forward with the challenges that we are faced, we are looking forward to partnership with industry. We must have a relationship that has shared risks producing shared benefits, and this is an example where that has come forth in spades. But it also represents a partnership we have with the American people. This is the fourth USS Omaha to go forth, and she represents the, the strength and the fortitude of her city and her state. Like her namesake, USS Omaha is tough and ready. Built in America, this ship is ready to deliver the fight tonight. For many people around the world, this will be the only thing they see of America. The Omaha and her crew will represent the United States Navy with great pride and diligence. Today's plaque owners have the privilege of writing the first chapter in the ship's history. I'm certain they will do Omaha, Nebraska, and the United States proud. Thank you. May God bless the United States. May God bless the USS Omaha, Miss Susie Buffett, and all those who sail upon her. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me a great privilege when I have the, uh, one of some of the great jobs of the Secretary of the Navy is to pick the speaker for commissionings and for christenings. And today, it, it's, uh, who I'm about to introduce took very little time for me to come to the conclusion of who this person should be. It is truly a privilege, and I mean that, truly a privilege to introduce a great American, former senator and governor from the state of Nebraska, university president, Navy SEAL, Medal of Honor winner, a true Renaissance person, Senator Bob Kerry. Well, it's so disappointing. I mean, when he asked me to uh, deliver the speech, he said I could talk as long as I wanted. So I've got about an hour and a half uh, story I'm going to tell. But when I see, you know, 40 guys over here in dress blues and parade dress, I think shortening up is a, is a very good idea. I want to thank all the dignitaries who were here. Uh, uh, I, I, the Secretary Mavis, uh, you were the one that uh, fought the battle in the beginning. It's, it's great to see you here, both the naming of, the, of this boat and selecting Susie Buffett, uh, uh, Secretary Spencer, the two of you uh, couldn't have picked a better person. Uh, these, these, this is a really important tradition, uh, the commissioning of a, of, a, of, a, of a U.S. Navy boat. It's a long tradition. We borrowed uh, from our European friends uh, to create much of what we do at these ceremonies. There's one thing that we didn't borrow from the, from the Norsemen. They, they used to have a human sacrifice at these things. And I'm, although I have a few candidates in mind, um, I, I think it's a sound thing that we didn't do it. Look, th there is a story here, and it, it, at a time when so many Americans are, are yielding to the, uh, the siren song of cynicism, saying that the system doesn't work, uh, the system did produce this boat, and it wasn't easy. And, and both the, uh, Secretary Mabus and, and Senator Nelson can give you a lot more detail than I can, but there were setbacks. There were skeptics. There were opponents. There were people say that it couldn't get done. All the technology in this ship didn't exist uh, when the project began. The Navy's needs change, and the design had to change as a consequence. Uh, there's, a, there's a story here that tells us that our system of government does work. So if you're looking for an example, and God knows we need them, uh, uh, that give you confidence in our capacity to govern ourselves, this ship uh, should give you that confidence. So I will just simply say to the skipper and to the other officers and to the plank members of, of, of the USS Omaha, and what we, I've, learned, I've learned to do this at, when I went through officer candidate school years ago, it's about the only thing that I think I, I remember, which is uh, to, to say to all of you, fair winds and following seas. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator Kerry. 
Secretary Spencer, I would be honored if you would join me at the podium and place Omaha in commission. For the President of the United States, I hereby place the United States ship Omaha in commission. May God bless and guide this warship and all who sail in her. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Executive Officer, hoist the colors and the commissioning pennant. Aye, right, sir. Omaha, I attend. Hook. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. I direct your attention to the ship's mast as we hoist the colors and the commission pennant. Quartermaster, hoist the colors and the commission pennant. Aye, aye, sir. Captain, the colors and the commission pennant are flying over U.S. Omaha. Very well. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. I will now read my orders. From Chief of Naval Personnel to Commander Michael Toth, United States Navy, subject Buper's Order number 0337. When directed by reporting senior, assume duties as commanding officer of pre-commissioning unit Omaha for duties in conjunction with fitting out. Upon commissioning of USS Omaha, report for duty as commanding officer. Admiral Swift, USS Omaha is in commission and I am in command. Executive officer, set the watch. Aye, sir. Off to the deck, set the first watch. Aye, sir. The officer of the deck is the commanding officer's direct representative, and while in watch is responsible for the safety and smooth operation of the ship and her crew. <laughs> the long glass is the traditional symbol of the officer of the deck's authority in the ship of the line. We're honored to have chairman of Omaha Commission Committee, Captain Richard Holcroft here today to assist in setting the first watch. He will pass our ship's long glass to our first officer of the deck, Lieutenant Jordan Sugars from Winchester, Virginia. The petty officer of the watch is Logistics Specialist Second Class Joshua Silver from Portland, Oregon. The messenger of the watch is Damage Controlman Third Class Selena Yang from Fresno, California. And the boatswain's mate of the watch is boatswain's mate First Class Brendan Braveboy from Beltsville, Maryland. Set the watch on deck. Watch section one. Sir, the watch is set. Very well. Captain, the watch is set. Very well. We are delighted to have our sponsor, Ms. Susie Buffett, here with us today. Ms. Buffett christened this ship in Mobile, Alabama on December 19th, 2015. Susie, I would be honored if you would join me and give the order to man our ship and bring her to life. Thank you, Commander Toth. Good afternoon, everyone. I just have to start by saying that Craig used the word coolest for this ship, which I totally agree with. I would like to say it's badass. <laughs> so I, I'm lucky enough to have enjoyed a lot of really great days in my life, but nothing compares to this. Wow. I'm so proud of each of you and so proud of everyone who had a hand in building the USS Omaha. You make me so very proud of the United States of America. I'm joined today by a group of friends and colleagues from Omaha. It's a humbling experience for us to participate in this commissioning ceremony, which has been a U.S. Navy tradition since 1775. Think of all those men and women who have come before us in the past 243 years. Today is a true privilege, and we thank you. On behalf of the people back home in Omaha and throughout Nebraska, 
I can tell you how filled with joy and pride we all are with, by this ship and by your service. As I, noticed when the Omaha, as I noted, when the Omaha was christened, the city of Omaha is right in the middle of America's heartland, and our city motto is courageously in every enterprise. Well, no enterprise is more important than the one you undertake today, and no one inspires us with more courage than each of you. Today, you are accepting this immense responsibility to turn the USS Omaha from a great metal vessel into a living, fighting, manned and womaned warship. I salute you, and I know everyone back home salutes you too. As you carry out your duties in the months and years ahead, there will be days and nights aboard this mighty ship when you will find yourself feeling lonely. But you must always remember, you will never really be alone. Your fellow sailors will be with you, and I commit to you that thousands of us back in Omaha and throughout Nebraska will be with you as well, through thick and thin, through combat and in peace, whatever may come. So today, let us celebrate the commissioning of this ship and the dedication of an entire community to your well-being. Officers and crew of the USS Omaha, man our ship and bring her to life. Ladies and gentlemen, the crew of USS Omaha salutes you. We're proud to serve in your great Navy. Ready, two. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Yes, sir.
Captain, U.S. Omaha's manned and ready. Very well. Commodore Harrison, USS Omaha is manned and ready and reports for duty. Very well, Mike. Time to go to work, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Secretary Spencer, request permission to break your flag. Permission granted. Aye, aye, sir. Executive Officer, break the flag of the Secretary of the Navy. Aye, sir. Quartermaster, break the flag of the Secretary of the Navy. Aye, aye, sir. Captain, the flag of the Secretary of the Navy is flying over USS Omaha. Very well. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Commander Michael Toth, Commanding Officer, United States Ship Omaha, LCS-12. Omaha, parade, rest. Ms. Buffett, Senator Kerry, Governor Ricketts, Representative Bacon, Secretary Spencer, Mayor Falconer, Admiral Swift, Admiral Brown, Mayor Stothert, Admiral Nagley, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the warm welcome and for joining us today. It is my distinct pleasure to be before you today as the commissioning CEO of Omaha and tell you about the ship and her crew. She is a beautiful ship. From her sleek lines to the command center on the bridge, to walk aboard is to step into the future of naval warfare and ship construction. The aluminum finish allows her to shine as she is beaming with the pride of her namesake city and the ships that have gone before her. It is a great honor and privilege to be her commanding officer and to take such a beautiful ship to sea. And she is fast and reliable. She is the fastest and most maneuverable warship in the Navy inventory. To be at her helm is more akin to flying an aircraft with a pilot and co-pilot than to conning a traditional warship. She is also flexible. Aside from the primary mission modules, she has a large reconfigurable volume and a USB-like interface to the ship's computing systems. This means Omaha can be configured for today's missions, but tomorrow's missions as well. But more importantly, she is lethal. With their 57 millimeter and 30 millimeter twin, twin 30 millimeter guns, she is more than a match for any small boat attack and her sea ram missiles as well as decoy expendables ensure she is well defense, defended against longer range threats. She will also have a future capability of long range surface to surface attack, further increasing her lethality. No ship, however, is complete without her crew and while minimally manned, Omaha is no exception. Her 69 crew members are some of the most highly trained sailors in the Navy. These sailors have completed more than 12,000 days of classroom and simulator training to prepare for this journey. They are professional, competent, tough, and motivated people, and I'd like to take a minute to recap some of their recent accomplishments. The crew reported to Mobile, Alabama in May of 2017 to begin the process of taking delivery of the ship from Austell, USA. In the ensuing months, the sailors completed stock inventories and loadout of more than 4,000 line items, validated engineering, deck, and combat systems, operating procedures, and drawings, and prepared for their certifications, getting themselves in Omaha ready to sail. Let me just mention a few of the highlights of that period. The sailors completed 330 space turnovers in direct support of the timely delivery of the ship. My ne network engineers scored a 98% on their cyber readiness inspection. My culinary specialists have already prepared more than 24,000 meals for the crew. The crew achieved a 96% score on their force protection certification while completing 95 crew serve weapons and 65 small arms qualifications, expending more than 150,000 rounds of ammunition to ensure Omaha is kept safe. During the engineering certification known as light off assessment, the engineering department demonstrated their prowess in the completion of more than 970 material checks and evolutions with a first pass yield of greater than 92%. That in addition to their uh, excuse me, that in addition to their countless hours of preparation and coupled with the entire crew's flawless conduct of a main space fire drill allowed the completion of the assessment two and a half days ahead of schedule. In fact, they performed so well and their preparation was so thorough that the senior assess assessor noted in his report, quote, the ship was a pleasure to assess, unquote. In November, the crew sailed the ship for the first time, completing her navigation and seamanship assessments, ensuring she was safe to continue the voyage to home port. Along the way, the crew enjoyed a Thanksgiving at sea, a visit to Mayport, Florida, Christmas in Norfolk, Virginia, a port call in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, and 
fuel stops in Manzanilla, Mexico, and Cristobal, Panama. Each of these demanding seamanship and navigation details was accomplished safely and professionally, culminating in Omaha becoming the first United States Navy ship to transit the new Panama locks, Panamax locks in the Panama Canal. The crew you see before you has already sailed more than 6,500 miles and transitioned from a pre-commissioning crew to a qualified, certified, and seasoned mariners ready to execute any assigned mission. No captain has ever had a harder working and more motivated crew, and I couldn't be prouder of them. Finally, I'd like to take... Finally, I'd like to take a moment to say thank you. Thank you to Susie for being the amazing person and sponsor that you are. Thank you to Captain Holcroft, and thanks to your committee for their tireless efforts. Thank you to the citizens of Omaha for their generous support. Thank you to the hardworking men and women of Austell Shipbuilding, which produced the amazing warship before you. And thank you to the family and friends of my sailors for your support over these many months. I would also, not be, I would also be remiss in not giving a shout out and thanks to my five brothers and sisters who have joined us today. And lastly, thank you to my beautiful wife, Stephanie. Your selfless support is what has made this day possible for me. It is the nature of our business that it requires hard work, but I can tell you that Omaha sailors are up to the challenge. Courageously in every enterprise, that is the motto of USS Omaha and her crew. I hope that through these remarks, I've been able to convey to you a small portion of the things these sailors have accomplished to embody that motto and make LCS-12 a proud carrier of the name Omaha. Thank you. Ship's Company, Pilot 10, Hut. Will the guests please rise? Chaplain Shields will now lead us in the benediction. Let us pray. Eternal Father, from whom we come and to whom we will ultimately return, we commend USS Omaha, Captain Top, his amazing crew and their loyal and dedicated families to your constant care and keeping. Make USS Omaha's name great among those whose judgment is honored. Spread her fame throughout the world so that young sailors may desire to serve aboard her and the old would admire her many accomplishments. Almighty God, grant that our nation would always pursue peace through power and may we ever continue to draw our strength and support from you whose perfect love is our peace and whose peace is our power. The Lord Almighty bless us and keep us. The Lord watch over our going out and our coming in. The Lord direct our days and our deeds in his peace from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Shields. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated and remain seated for the departure of our platform guests. 